Let me tell you that this is probably gonna be the last comedy that I do for a while. <laughs> Hey guys, Melinda here. I am really not stoked about what I picked this week to watch. And so I have a lot of bad things to say about it and kind of just want to get it over with. So we're gonna just jump right into this. Today I am going to be talking about the film Buddy Games. Before I get into the review, I have to do my little spiel of that. If you haven't seen any of my other movie or TV reviews, I like to review it in a way that gives no spoilers so anybody can come click on this video, yada yada yada. Yeah, you know the drill. Can you tell how excited I am to film this movie review? <laughs> so yes, I am going to be talking about Buddy Games, which came out last year in 2020, and it was just not a good film. I will be honest, I had no knowledge of this film whatsoever going into it, just I read the little tagline for it. This is streaming on Hulu. If you want to go check it out, I will not recommend this film. So yes, I just read the little tagline of what the film is about, it seemed kind of similar to the idea of tag, which I have never seen but have always wanted to. It looks hilarious. And so I just thought, you know what? This is probably going to be along that same line. So I'm going to give it a shot and see what happens. And boy, do I regret that decision. <laughs> Basically, what this film is about is six college buddies every single year get together for what they call buddy games, which is stupid, pointless games and pranks that they pull on each other for bragging rights, basically. Basically. One year things go awry so then they all go their separate ways. Five years later they decide to come together and redo the games but with a bigger stake. They are playing for $150,000 in cash. So high stakes seems like it really could be a really fun neat concept but I just think it was portrayed awful. This is classified as a comedy, but I would say it's more of a raunchy comedy, but like a disgusting raunchy comedy. I can do raunchy, not a problem. So very, very inappropriate and very gross. Usually I can do raunchy. It can make me a little uncomfortable, but like it's tolerable. This I flat out wanted to turn the film off, but because I had already dedicated the time to it and I was prepared to watch this film for this week, I just decided to tough it out. But if I was just leisurely watching this, I would have turned it off, honestly. So the very first thing that I wrote about this film is that it is dumb and pathetic. So this raunchy comedy in particular I wrote is very gross and very graphic. Things that should not be in a raunchy comedy, but can be like talked about, insinuated about, anything like that is fine. But when you actually go the extra step to show it, that's where I draw the line. That is when I got so disgusted and grossed out by this film that I got really nauseous and felt like I was gonna throw up and really desperately wanted to turn the film off, but I powered through it. So keep that in mind if you watch this film. This film is Josh Duhamel's directorial debut and I will say that he did a pretty good job as a director. The film itself came out really good. I just had a lot of issues with the story and the acting. So from a director standpoint, I think he did a very good job and that is a good thing that this film has. Going along that, there are so many big names in this film. I was actually kind of surprised. Holy cow, we got 17% on Rotten Tomatoes. Yes. Accurate. So we have Josh Jamal, Olivia Munn. Can I just say that of the actors listed here, Olivia Munn is the first one listed, which she isn't even a main character. Then we have Josh Jamal, and then we have Jensen Ackles, who has a very small part in this, which I'll get into a little bit later, but he's the third one listed, and I just think that's kind of funny. Josh Jamal, Olivia Munn, Jensen Ackles, Dax Shepard, James Rode Rodriguez, Kevin Dillon, Dan Bacadal. Sorry if I'm saying any of these names wrong, goodness, and Nick Swartzen. All of the bigger main characters are all big names, which is good that you need that for a film of this nature. This film I wrote was trying way too hard to be funny and it's just not my kind of humor. I will admit that there were a couple times that I got a giggle or a chuckle out of me, but not like belly laughing, which is I think what they were trying to go for, especially because there were a lot of 
gross and disgusting to this film. I just didn't find it funny. I found it gross. I believe that there was lazy writing within this story. I mean, I can't really critique it because it's a comedy. It's not supposed to be a masterpiece and like the best thing I've ever seen. But I have seen some pretty cleverly written comedies that I admire and think do a great job. So yes, I just felt like it was very lazy writing and there were just like a bunch of weird side stories and situations that were happening that had absolutely nothing to do with the main plot or the premise, just anything like that. It just felt very random and weird and like the writer just was like, hey, this seems funny, let's throw it in there. Oh, you know what? This doesn't make sense, but we're gonna throw it in there anyway. I don't know, that's really how it felt as I was watching it because there was just so many weird random events that kept happening. Along with the lazy writing, I did not like the character development at all. I didn't like the characters. I think not to diss the actors in any way because obviously they're big names and they, they know what they're doing, obviously, and they're good at what they do, but the acting just felt very off and I think that's probably because of the characters that they were trying to play. There was really no character development whatsoever. They all act like really dumb, immature college kids even though they're like in their 40s by at this point. The things that they did as characters were very unrealistic and unbelievable and just I could not believe what any of these characters were doing. Example, but no spoilers, Josh Duhamel's character has a girlfriend who's played by Olivia Munn. She, at the beginning of the film, is like very angry at him for like no reason whatsoever and just kind of storms off. It was just very uncomfortable and confusing. And then at the very end, she comes back and she's supporting him for the buddy games. And then it turns into like this crazy psychotic girlfriend mode and and I don't know, it just, again, was unrealistic, unbelievable, and just, just weird. Just not fitting at all and does not work well with the story that was developed throughout this hour and a half film. All right, let's see what else we got going on. <laughs> but one of my notes is that Jensen Ackles is the best part of the whole movie. Jensen Ackles plays a side character that is that maybe has less than five minutes of screen time. He is is the brother of Dak Shepard's character who is trying to become an actor in Hollywood and his brother and his sister work on a construction site and there's like a phone call that happens between them and just Jensen Ackles in that scene is so funny and actually was like the best actor out of everybody in this film. I can't really describe it but just if you watch the film and you watch that scene you just want to give Jensen Ackles an Oscar because that was phenomenal and absolutely absolutely hands down the best part of the entire movie. Sorry to say, but it's true. So when the buddy games actually start, it actually looks kind of fun. Like it would be a fun obstacle course to do with your friends. Those scene montages that they did were very entertaining and obviously what we've been building up to the entire film. The cinematography was great. It was just so fun to watch that play out. But at the same time, the games, the obstacles, every little detail that goes into it is so elaborate that it is also unbelievable for these characters. Josh Dumas' character is the one that coordinates everything that goes into the buddy games. The first game that they do is the obstacle course and there's like a mud pit involved. There's like these giant balls, uh, clear balls that they have to get into and run around and oh gosh, there was, just, there was so much in this obstacle course that just didn't seem possible for adults in their 40s, you know, to come up with make sure it's perfect and it works. And again, it just kind of falls in line with, it just didn't feel realistic. It didn't feel believable, but it was really fun to watch. So it, it was that moment where it's like, I know it's a film and I know they have a budget to make this like the best thing possible. But if you were to step into this reality, it did not feel like it could be real and it could be possible. So that's it. I'm just gonna leave it at that. I did wanna say that it was also a little weird that when they get to like the final event of of the buddy games, there was like a, an audience. There was a group of people just parked on the side and watching this entire thing. And I'm just thinking, why? Who would take the time out of their day to come do this? And like their parents are supporting them. And then that's when the girlfriend comes back and she like forgives him and is supporting him. And like, I don't know, it just felt really weird that all of these random 
random people are suddenly here cheering on for whoever they want to win. What? I also wrote specifically about the girlfriend like forgiving him and coming to support him. There was no resolution there. It just was convenient because they never had a conversation. They go the whole movie of Josh Jamal trying to call her. She won't return any of his calls. She shows up out of the blue and is supporting him and odd weird. It kind of falls in line with what I'm saying about lazy writing and that they just wanted to kind of tie everything up in a neat bow and so, so convenient for the story to have her there even though they don't explain how we got from point A to point B. There was a slight plot twist that I thought was very interesting but has like a lot of issues with it that I won't get into. So yes, we end with the movie tying everything up in a neat pretty little bow and they leave it open for interpretation whether or not we will get a sequel to Buddy Games and I pray that they do not because this was a terrible movie. That is everything. Those are all of my notes. I did, I did have more notes, but those are kind of like in specific to scenes and events that happen within the film, which I don't want to talk about because I don't want to give spoilers. If any of you guys are interested in having a further discussion about this film, please leave it down in the comments down below. I don't want to say I'd love to have a discussion about it, but I am willing to have a discussion about it. That is everything for this movie review. All of my thoughts, my comments, my notes, out on the table. Thank you guys so much for watching. Thank you all for the support. If you like this video, go ahead, give it a big thumbs up. It would absolutely mean the world to me. And make sure to hit that subscribe button if you're not already and you wanna see more content. With that being said, I will see you guys in the next video. Live life, always laugh, and enjoy the journey. Bye.